Hi, welcome to another OCD recovery YouTube video. Um, I haven't done one for a little while. Um, I've been on holiday for a couple of weeks, um, so I'm just getting back into the swing of it. And I thought, you know what, I fancy jumping on here, making a video on something that I've seen discussed a lot um, on the Facebook groups, um, comments on, the, on, on, on some of my YouTube videos, um, and that's to discuss in more detail a real event and false memory OCD. Now, this was a theme that had me stuck for many years. Um, I remember living in the past for so long, just going day, day to day, and my mind would be in the past. So I'd be there, um, I'd obviously be there, but my mind would be elsewhere, and my mind would be some, um, ruminating about something that happened five years ago, ten years ago, so constantly trying to analyse trying to work out the past, trying to solve or trying to find a key to peace in the past. Um, not only did I, sorry, only when I realised that the perspectives of what I hold on that event, um, that that's where the answer lies. Until I realised that, then I was, I was chronically stuck, um, chronically anxious, chronically guilt, um, and I wasn't really getting anywhere. No amount of analysing, no amount of ruminating, no amount of working out and replaying a situation for the millionth time. It just wasn't getting me the answer. Um, and I will, in this video, I'll go into what helped me um, shape the beliefs and change my perspectives gradually and what helped that theme unlatch. So yeah, like I said, I, I was stuck many years with, with this theme. Um, and what I would like to really highlight, the, the first main point of this theme, is that no event in the past, or no acts, anything, any memory, um, any event, nothing in the past warrants chronic guilt today. Alright, so of course, so healthy feelings, so healthy regret, healthy sadness, healthy sorrow, of course you want to learn from you your mistakes. If you did something that you didn't like in the past, of course you want to learn from that and not do that again. All right, but feeling chronically guilty where you can't even function or chronically um, or constantly ruminating about the past or replaying an event, it serves no purpose, it, it serves no good, it does no benefit. All right, of course we want to learn, we want to improve ourselves, we want to not perform badly again, of course, but constantly analysing it and beating yourself up and calling yourself a terrible, evil, awful person because of this one thing. It serves no good. It doesn't do anyone any good. Okay. So, and it's all about perspectives in the now. So, it sounds quite simple what I'm going to say, but you can't change the past. Now, I know that sounds very simple and very basic, but it's, it's as simple as that. You cannot change the past. So it's all about your perspective of the past, your perspective on, of a memory. That is where the answer lies. Now, it took me years to realise that. Now, when when I started recovery work with Rob and, and the team, <clears throat> did I start to realise that. That is where change happened. That is where progress was made. When I started looking at my beliefs, looking at my perspectives, adopting the unconditional acceptance, um, leaning towards worst case scenario, did I start? Did I start to see some change, some positive progress? All right. So if I go on onto fears uh, relating to real event, false memory, OCD, um, and mine were mainly sort of the fear of rejection. Um, a big one of mine was, I remember constantly thinking, I'd, I'd be with friends, and I, in the back of my mind, is constantly, oh, if only they knew. Am I living a lie? Am I living some sort of secret? Am I keeping a secret from everyone? I remember the guilt that, that accompanied that was so strong and it took over the moment. I remember all I was feeling was the chronic guilt because of, if only they knew. I um, only knew I was a, a terrible, awful person, but I was constantly telling myself. Um, and then that, when I would speak to other people, just trying to socialise, constantly banging away in the past, ramped up guilt. All right. If you hold those beliefs and you're calling yourself a terrible person, there's no wonder you feel like that. All right, uh, linking to the fear of fear side of things with real event false memory, and that is fear of feeling um, guilty forever, or if you do see some progress, fear of it coming back, or fear of another event that OCD latching onto. I remember I used to confess a lot. I used to seek reassurance all the time. Now, what OCD used to do with that is I confess an event or confess a memory, 
and then I'd get a temporary relief. And then let's say, this is just an example, but five minutes, an hour, a day, it would find something else and it would twist something else. Um, something just, it could be when, when I was a child, um, it could have happened yesterday. It can twist absolutely anything. There's, there's nothing that OCD can't twist and manipulate and, and sort of link it into something that you, you'd see as the worst thing in the world. It can find absolutely anything. All right. Um, <clears throat> so yes, yeah, so not only when I started to work on my perspectives of that, um, I, I, I stopped analysing, although how hard that can be, because you can't just say, well, stop ruminating and then you're sorted. That's not quite how it works. Um, you're ruminating because of, because of the fear level is quite high. So when you work on the fears and break down those beliefs, I can't talk about that enough. And that is when the automatic rumination will start to come down. Now, when I talk about the fears of fear of being rejected, of course, I wouldn't want that but you're not um, catastrophizing it. You're not exaggerating it. So if I was rejected because of this one thing, I wouldn't like that, of course, but is it the worst thing in the world? Is my life, life totally over? Am I totally written off as a person? If I'm telling myself that, then it would be, but of course, that's not how life works. It's perspectives. Um, you, you can make a, a, a bad choice in the past. It doesn't mean your life's totally done. Okay, you can learn from that. Um, you're, you're a fallible human who makes mistakes, who makes good acts, bad acts, neutral acts. So as you're gradually working away at your beliefs and adopting the unconditional acceptance, remembering that acceptance is, it, acceptance is an agreement. Um, like I keep saying, you don't have to like something. You can completely hate something in the past. You can completely dislike and, and hate something that you, or disagree with something that you did. Um, but it doesn't mean your whole life is totally over. It doesn't completely write you off as a person. All right. Um, so if I give some examples, um, of course, there could be a million real events. I can't list, sit here and list off every real event because you would have switched off about, after about the 20th scenario <laughs> and I would be here all night. So let's give you an example. So let's say you're caught up in a traffic accident. All right. And you could say it, you might have been not concentrating, lack of concentration. And you could say it was your fault. All right. You could be getting the blame for it. Now, this is a classic example and um, it would be a good practice of how you can apply unconditional acceptance and work on your beliefs. All right. So rather than feeling that chronic guilt, of course, you're, you're going to feel regret that you, you that you should have concentrated more. Of course. And you're going to go, oh, I wish I'm going to make sure I concentrate more in the future. Um, you're going to look back and say, OK, I could have done that different. Um, I could have made sure I, I did this or did that. Um, but constantly analysing it, looking at it and beating yourself up and saying you're the worst person in the world and you can't possibly live with yourself. You see when that doesn't help at all. Right? It serves no good in the future because you're not going to be able to function that well if you're constantly beating yourself up. So if you're saying, OK, I didn't like that. I, I strongly con um, condemn that. But I can learn from that. Um, I can aim to not do that in the future. You see what I mean by rating the act, but I'm not rating myself. So I'm not liking something, but I'm not totally damning myself. I'm a person who does all different acts, all right, whether I like it or not. I do. I can do bad acts, good acts, neutral acts, but I can also learn from them and aim to perform better in the future. All right. Now, if you haven't read the books or haven't really put much recovery work in you might not really know what i mean with unconditional acceptance um but that is the sort of the basic of it and i'd really recommend reading the books on the reading list on the ocd recovery resources page on the website um where the books are listed there and um, that is a really good um introduction to in unconditional acceptance all right so i'll give you another example all right, you could have acted angrily in the heat of a moment. Um, let's say you're on a night out with your friends and you might have had a few drinks and then someone says something you don't like and you've acted angrily and, you, and you've hit them. Let's say you've done that. All right, and the next day you're, you're wrapped up with chronic guilt, calling yourself the worst person in the world. Um, you feel really guilty, you feel really terrible. This is where we rate the act. So I really wish I didn't do that. I prefer, I much prefer I didn't do that, but I'm not writing myself off as a person. I'm not saying I'm no good, I deserve to be punished forever. You're not saying that, all right? That's when you get into emotional trouble. That is when the disturbance comes. That is when the chronic guilt is going to be there, ramped up 24-7 with OCD, exaggerating it, all right? Because there are going to be events. There are going to be um, real things that happen to you in life. 
Um, it's not all just going to be um, exaggerated OCD scenarios. There are going to be real things that can happen. Okay, you could um, uh, very unfortunate things can happen. Uh, let's say you could lose your job. Of course, and OCD is going to latch onto that and say and catastrophize it, and make it the worst thing in the world. So you can constantly work on your beliefs around real events um, and 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 around whatever OCD is latched onto with a false memory. Okay, you 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 can work on that. So yeah, that's just a few quick examples. Um, it's anything. There's not an exception with real events, false memory. Like I said, I could be sat here all night talking about all these different things, but there's not an exception. You can you can Im implement um, the advice I'm giving. You can you can put into practice the tools of, it's, especially with the book, like the Albert Ellis book. I just doubly refuse to make you sure miserable about anything. Yes, anything. There's no exception. You can apply these tools towards anything in life. Right, strongly dislike something, strongly disagree with something, but not writing yourself off totally as a person. I probably sound like a broken record, but I can't highlight that enough. All right, so it's your perspective of something in the past rather than the actual act, rather than the actual event. It's your perspective. It's it's your opinion. It, it's your it's your belief on that is causing the disturbance. I can't highlight that enough. All right, so I hope that's some more detail on real event false memory OCD. Um, if you've got any more suggestions or any more anything I've said in this video you'd like to me to elaborate on, um, go into some more detail, please do comment. I would happily have a look and we'll try and, and, and do a video on that to explain or to go into some more detail, like I've said. So if you've liked the video, please leave a like. I would much appreciate that. Um, any suggestions please leave a comment and if you haven't subscribed already to the channel please do so that'd be much appreciated anyway take care bye bye